I did a video where I showed a square wave on a spectrum analyzer and showed you that the um, square wave produces all the odd harmonics. And um, so and then I showed uh, changing the duty cycle of the square wave also started introducing even harmonics. And so somebody said, you know, to really understand that, you really need to do the math. And while I agree that uh, math is extremely important, it's not really um, what I want this channel to be about. But I thought it'd be interesting to at least talk about the topic and maybe get some people interested. So my channel, I try to get people interested in electronics as a hobby, but sometimes that might spill over into a passion and that might lead somebody to want to go actually get an engineering degree or a physics degree or some type of uh, situation where you do need to know um, the mathematics and theories and stuff of everything. So this is just kind of a, kind of a tickler. So there's something called the Fourier series. Um, it's fairly old now. And um, it's named after Joseph Fourier. And he was trying to do actually a heat equation with nothing to do with electronics, but he was trying to, to do a heat conduction equation. And he found that he needed to kind of slice up his problem into little bitty bits and try to find kind of how it was all put together. And so he said that for a particular function, it can be described as a whole series of sines and cosines all added together in weird ways. And then each term of this series can have a different coefficient. So you can have n number of coefficients, n number of terms. You can have sines, you can have cosines. The terms can be either positive or negative. And you can describe all sorts of waveforms using the Fourier series. You might hear the outcome of that these days is, is what's called an FFT. So in order to deconstruct a waveform into its Fourier series, that's called a transform. You can have a, you can have a Fourier transform. There's a, there's a trick in computer programming where somebody figured out a nice algorithm to do, to do that efficiently, and that was called the fast Fourier transform, or FFT. So a lot of spectrum analyzers are based off of FFTs. Your oscilloscope may have an FFT in it that allows you to look at the, uh, at the frequency domain and stuff. Anyway, so let's just, I'm gonna include a couple links down below. This is the first one. Like I said, I'm not gonna teach the Fourier transforms. There's dozens of YouTube videos of people teaching you Fourier transforms and Fourier series. So just go look for them. You will find bunches of people doing that. So what it basically says is this first equation is a whole bunch of kinds, sines and cosines all added together to get to give you something. And then there's a whole bunch of mathematics. The summations turned into integrals. Um, the integrals then turn into um, uh, other types of equations. Um, and you end up with uh, the Fourier series uh, as, a, uh, as an integral form. So uh, here, this particular uh, textbook is going to talk about what does a square wave look like. A square wave is just a function where it's high, and then it's low, and then it's high, and then it's low. And then it shows you how to break that, that uh, into a bunch of Fourier uh, uh, coefficients and equations. And you find out that, uh, you know, things are even and odd and yada, yada, yada. You find that you need all the odd ones. And then you get a page like this that shows you, you know, how do they, how do they add up? The, the first one just looks like a sine wave. Two of them looks like a lumpy sine wave. Three of them looks a little more square. You just keep adding more and more and more of them together with the right coefficients. You end up with what would appear to be a square square wave. Now that is pretty a pretty lumpy square wave in this particular case. Uh, that was with 15 terms, right? But in the absolute, remember these integrals go from zero to infinity. If you do an infinite number of things, yes, it does turn out to be it does turn out to be true. All right. So you can also describe 
other types of things using not just square waves, but other types of waveforms. And you can deconstruct those. So you can take, uh, like here, they're taking a flute and a violin. They deconstruct those into the uh, Fourier series so they know uh, which uh, harmonics are being generated. That's called the timber of the of the of the of the instrument. Why it's why it sounds like a flute. Why it sounds like a violin. You can plot those, and you can say, "Oh, look at this. The violin has lots of harmonics. The flute has a limited number of harmonics, and that's why it sounds the way it does." So Fourier stuff is is very very cool. All right. So if you want to go even a step further, um, these days you might want to express things in. Uh, complex numbers. I don't like the name complex. They're not complex. They're just a mathematical trick. Um, but they do use the square root of negative one, which is I. And you can use Euler's equation to show that e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. So remember the Fourier series is a, is a bunch of cosines and sines added together. So you could think, well, we can just use e to the i somethings, and you could add a whole bunch of those together. And then you can come up with something that looks something like, here's Euler again. Uh, this is doing a derivation of taking Fourier series into the complex. So here's the complex form of the Fourier series using just e to the i. I, uh, I omega t kind of thing. Um, so, um, all right, let me show you one thing. Again, I'll put all the links down below. This is a kind of a little example here. This is Demos, and they are showing you a uh, Fourier series for a sine for a square wave. And as you add, there's a slider here, and as you add more and more terms. Uh, two, three, four. You can add them up and they just keep getting better and better and better. And then they never quite get there. So it's never quite satisfying to me that they never quite got there. Okay. So how many coefficients does it take to get a reasonably looking square wave? Yeah, infinite is perfect, but how many would we need to get a reasonable one? So let me show you that. Okay. I'm going to be using Octave, which is the free free clone of uh, MATLAB. Um, and here's a little program that does the Fourier series for a um, for a square wave. And if I run this, uh, it will give us um, the different waveforms with increased harmonic content, right? So, you know, one, three, five, seven. Um, this particular graph goes all the way up to 30. And obviously it's still a pretty ugly thing. So let's let's increase it tenfold. Let's go to 300. And uh, here you can see we've now we have 300 coefficients. Still still pretty ugly, right? Still pretty ugly. Um, it's getting better. I mean, it's all, they're all plotted on top of one another here. So let's let's reduce the number that we're showing here. Plot. I'm showing every 20th. Yeah, let's do every 30th. So that's only 10. That's only 10 waveforms. So this is, I'm plotting the 10 different versions. All right. So then let's go to 3,000. And we're starting to get better. Um, let's go here to 30,000. And let's plot every 300. And it's still not there. 30,000, let's go to 300,000. And there we go. We're starting to get, we're starting to get reasonable in there, right? <laughs> so it takes a lot of harmonics in order to get a perfect square wave. And if you think about it, 
if you have a perfect square wave, then the rising edge is infinite frequency. Infinite frequency, because you're going from you know zero to one or negative one to one in this case, um, in an instantaneous period of time. And in the frequency domain, that means that you have infinite frequency. So uh, that's why you need to add so many harmonics together to get the square wave. All right, well, there you go. Just kind of a little fun fact. Um, a lot of times you'll see the um, uh, series for uh, the Fourier series for a square wave just using odd harmonics with the coefficients just being the reciprocal of the of the um, coefficient you're on. And uh, in a true, um, if you want the square wave to go from one to minus one, you have to have a factor of four pi in there. Um, four, four, four divided by pi times your coefficient. If you just have the coefficient in there, if you just have the coefficient, which a lot of textbooks do it just that way to make it make the math look easier. So you just have one third, one fifth, one seventh coefficients. Um, you find that um, you still get a nice looking square wave, but the level at which the square wave uh, flattens out to is not one. It's lower than one. It's about 0.75, right? It's actually... Um, it's actually pi over four. Um, anyway, that's why there's an extra function in there. If you go to those papers, I think they actually derive the four pi as part of the equation. But um, yeah, do be aware of that.